house. Thank you for being here this morning. And we praise God for our cyber connections as well. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. Well, listen, if you have not yet, whether you're in the house or if you're watching from YouTube, our website page, or from Facebook, go ahead and invite someone to join you and let them know there is a word from the Lord. Amen. If you believe that, just give God some praise as our bishop comes to bring the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He alone is worthy. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all honor and glory. We thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for everybody that is here today, oh God. Those on different social media platforms, oh God. Our, our, our cyber connection, Father, we bless you. We thank you, God. Father, move mightily in the midst of us on today, God. Father, for we know that you're doing a new thing, God. Father, we bless you for it. We are grateful to be a part of the new thing that you're doing, God. Oh, God, have your way. Holy Spirit, move mightily amongst us on today, God. You know each and every one of us by name. You know our addresses. You know what we have need of, God. God, you are the God of all, oh God. You are the great I am, God. So God, be what they need you to be in this moment, in this space and time. It is in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Before you're seated this morning, tell your neighbors, good that we be here today. Man, that feels good. That sounds good. Hallelujah. It is good that we be here today. Praise God. Wow, amen. This is good. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I might take off and run and shout, but I'm going to try to contain myself. But anyway, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, um, first of all, uh, mm, I'm full right now, I'm full, hallelujah, yeah, okay, yes, amen, uh, Pastor Angie conference is coming up, amen, amen, you need to register, get locked in, you know, all of them have been great. But there's something about this one, going virtual. And, and, and the work that's being put in, the prayer that's being put in, there is so much that is happening behind the scenes to make this be what God wants it to be. And I want you to register, get locked in, invite others. How about this, a little challenge? You not only register, you invite five others. Amen. You don't want people to miss out. We can go to the best restaurant in the world or see a real good movie. We don't keep it to ourselves. We got to tell somebody. Hallelujah. Be like the woman at the well. Hallelujah. She couldn't keep it to herself. She took off running to tell her. Anyway, praise the Lord. I, I need to calm on down. Amen. But I want to put that in your hearing. Also, uh, Brother Dallas Brown. Keep him and his family lifted up. Amen. Uh, his son, daughter, she passed. Amen. Uh, his grandbaby, they, they, he said he used to come to his house every day, not, not every week, every day, you know. And uh, I talked with him the other day, prayed with him and, you know, made some calls. But he was like, he still couldn't get his head wrapped around it. When somebody that close to you, it is hard to get your head wrapped. And you're talking about not just a child, but a grandchild. It's hard to get your head wrapped around those kind of things. So keep that brother, amen, mother, to keep that brother lifted up in prayer. Keep that brother lifted up in prayer, the whole family. That is nothing that any of us as parents, you know, not being all this and that, right, but I ain't ready to go. But I don't want them going before me. I just, I just, just, just keeping it real, you know. Want to be here till my assignment is done, and I believe that, but I don't want to see none of mine, and guess what, and none of yours. But wanted to put that in your hearing. Amen. But please register. Uh, I, I mentioned to you all a few months ago about, uh, you know, y'all know, some of you know, may remember that I'm, um, I'm back in school. Amen. I'm back in school. 
uh, is one of the running jokes among some of my peers. Uh, I'm a, a professional student. <laughs> yes, I am. And my thing is that all of us be uh, professional students or continuing. How about continuing ed? Always getting educated. Amen. Amen. Don't let's let our job educate us. Let's continue to get educated in the kingdom and the things of God. Amen. But anyway, um, uh, you know, when you start doing clinicals, you have to do practicums and things of that nature. And so that that involves people. Uh, if, if, if a different setting, I would have to go work with somebody in their office and do uh, 300, 600 hours of super, being supervised and things of that nature. But in the particular program I'm a part of, what I have to have is uh, 25, uh, uh, my practicum, I have to have 25 um, uh, assessments done, uh, 15 with the, to finish out my master's and 10 with my PhD. Amen, amen, amen. I'm also going for a licensure. And, and, and I told Pastor Angela, I shared with her, and I was sharing with somebody the other day, my, my, my heart is, prior to pandemic taking place, people were already needing help. Yeah. You know, and I'm going, my, 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 my doctorate will be in the pastoral counseling arena. My licensure will be, I'll be able to counsel people, not just advise people, but really counsel people in the depths of who they are, what's going on. And, uh, and it's really exciting, but, but I'm doing it not to go get a job, because I have a vocation, uh, you know, but I want to help people at a whole nother level. And, and you know, uh, Pastor Angie might let me in on her business and we can partner together in her business, you know. I, I bring another side to her, to her empowerment business, you know. I, I'm putting it out there so y'all can pray for me, amen, amen. But why am I sharing this here? Um, I'm gonna need about 25 to 30 of you two to help me out with this. And I'm gonna give you uh, they'll put it up for you, but email me if you're interested in being part of this. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you it's, it's going to be a $30 assessment, a $30 assessment. And when you hear what it's all about, and I'm going to give you my email address so you can go ahead and email me those that are interested so I can explain it more so I don't have to take a lot of time here to explain it. But it's about your temp it's a temperament access, uh, assessment. And the truth of the matter is most marriages don't break up behind finances and behind sex. Most marriages break up behind temperament. People don't understand one another. We don't understand how people are made and, oh my God, master class is so powerful. Pastor Angie's doing these master classes on Thursday evening and, and all of them have been powerful. And this Thursday, I did a piece on mental health and a couple of question dialogue went on and I mentioned temperament and got some great feedback. Parents and children struggle and more so the parents struggle with their children because they don't know their temperament. And we we'll treat what we think we're seeing lacking understanding. And there's also a temperament for children. Just if, you, if you're interested, just shoot me an email at pastorrscott at refreshinglives.org. Pastorrscott at refreshinglives.org. Temperament is something that God gave us. God, when God built us, matter of fact, it's the very foundation of our inner man. We know we're spirit, but that is something that God, how God made us. He made us all different. And, that, and, and we learn how to process this. And this is a self-help tool. Again, enough about that. Email me if you're interested. Um, I think I might just go ahead and invest in Judea. She's not ready, but because it's assessment you got to do. But I think I'm going to invest in all our grandchildren go ahead and, and invest in our grandchildren. Because how can I help them be all that they can be if I don't fully understand them, how they're really made? And a lot of times we deal on the surface and, and, and you know, we do what we know. So it's no knock, no throwing in the rock. We do what we know, we do the best we can. But that's one of the reasons God has opened this door for me to go to school so I can bring it to us so we can get what we need to get, you know, and, um, so I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about it. But, you know, you got the address and, uh, and the email address and I'll give you more instruction. Um, it's a profile out there that and I, and I can go on and on about it. You can tell I'm excited about it. That's because it, it's, it's life changing. It's, it's, it's life changing. And people will understand that, man, it wasn't that I fell out of love. I just didn't understand. 
it, 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 it wasn't that, even you got, you got people in corporations that get their whole staff assessed. So people ain't arguing. I won't team up people with each other when I know their temperaments won't work. Their temperaments won't work. And people got chaos all in the office, all H, you know, break, breaking loose, all because people are just made differently. We say things about people not even understanding who they are. And I'm not even talking about the spiritual side of that yet. I'm just talking about the natural side, how we're made. So I think we all going to be better. We're going to be better. We're going to do better when we know better. Amen. OK. Whew. I love it, y'all. I, I am learning so much. I am learning so much. I'm going to do one on Pastor Angie. <laughs> I'm going to fill it out full. I ain't going to even let her do it. I'm going to do an assessment on her, and then I'm going to send it to the people, and they're going to send it back to her. And, and they'll send you directly the uh, assessment. They won't even send it to me. So I'll be out of the loop once we get that rolling. You'll get the assessment, and you'll be like, oh, got it. Anyway, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready for the word? <laughs> uh, I am too. Amen. Amen. Let's hold up our Bibles. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen, amen, amen. Last week we talked about a new attitude. My God, we talked about a new attitude. And but Apostle Paul, well, he was telling the people to have the attitude that Christ has. Having this mind of Jesus Christ is a choice. It's a choice. I, I reference uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 16, where it says that we have the mind of Christ. God has granted us the mind of Christ. But the truth be told, we understand life happens and things happen. And our mind has been under attack for, from the moment we've been in existence. But that don't change the fact that God gave us the mind of Christ. So we must do the work to get back to that mind that we're supposed to have. Amen. Uh, we also talked about operating in this mind is the key to being more than overcomers. Uh, it's one thing to be an overcomer, but we won't be more than an overcomer. Amen. I shared and I heard the brothers praying and as we prayed and the brothers we get together on Sundays and, and I heard them repeat this. God never consults our past for approval for our future. He never does that. The sad thing about many of us is that we find ourselves limiting ourselves because of our flesh and old memories. They hound us. Yeah, yeah. Re resulting in a lot of people being stuck in neutral. And sometimes what might look like growth and moving forward to others is just because they see people moving. But because they don't know their story, some people are actually going in circles. That's OK if you're on the NASCAR circuit. Because the race and the track are designed for you to go in circles. But even those race car drivers have a strategy while they're going in circles. And one thing that is important is they stay committed to the course that's being set. Whatever the strategy is that has been laid, has been put in place, they stay committed to the course. Hallelujah. And so we have to take a look at our own lives and make sure we're not just spinning our wheels. Justifying our actions and going in circles, but maturing and moving forward in God. Hallelujah. Here's the thing. Many of us got passengers riding with us. Given no thought that they're sitting, watching, listening, and learning. On New Year's Eve, I shared a message when Joshua, we talked about the other side of yes. Um, well, I, and I shared that we never read where he audibly, orally said yes to God. When God, God told him exactly, he said, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm giving thee, the children of Israel. He never audibly said yes, Lord. His actions spoke to his commitment because we always already know 
talk can be. I got a church in here with me today. All right, all right, all right. But it, it was plain to see that his soul says yes, his mind said yes, and his heart said yes. He responded with, he responded with a resounding yes, Lord, with his action. And he committed himself to the plans of God. Now, even though history assured him it would be challenging, because if it wouldn't have, God wouldn't have told him to be a good courage. Be strong and have good courage. I want y'all to hear, I want to, to the church today, be strong and of good courage. History also showed him how awesome God is. So with, with all of that in play, he had no problem with moving out and being committed to what God told him to do. Uh, Transform 60 on Monday, on Wednesday evening was so powerful. Pastor Andrew ministered, uh, uh, with, with, with no regrets. Oh, <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about her because she was all camera. That was her private time. I ain't gonna talk about her because she was in her private time. But I heard her crying out before the Lord. Church over on camera. <sighs> Just because the session might be over, she was still open to the spirit of the Lord. And God, her and God was just, the Holy Spirit was just having a good time. To the point I came downstairs to look in the office to see what was going on. The power of God had been rolled up in there. And the Holy Spirit refused to turn her loose and she had refused to let him go. My God, that was powerful, powerful, power. So this morning, I just want to piggyback a little bit on what she was talking about. I can't, I, I, I'm like, God, that was good to me. But, but I left her. Let me help us. When our spouse or whoever is, is in the midst with God like that, back off. Don't interrupt the flow. Don't interrupt what God is doing in that moment. I, that, I almost got saved again. <laughs> Looking at what God was doing in her life. Amen. Bless God. Amen. She was just giving him praise and, and whatnot. Amen. But please go with me to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Psalm 37 verse 5. Then we're going to go to Romans 12, 1 and 2. Then we're going to go to Matthew 6. And we might get to something on the back end. Psalm 37 and 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. It means to commit one's way to him and to truly trust the Lord. It means to find peace, protection and satisfaction in a surrendered focus upon God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I'm going somewhere with this this morning. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Very familiar passage of scripture. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's easy to see here that the Apostle Paul is calling for commitment. That, that's what it is. We can read it how we want to, but that's in the essence of what Apostle Paul is calling it. Believers to believers are being told to present themselves as a living sacrifice with the understanding. Hear me, church. There is no such thing as I'm kind of sort of committed to sacrificing. It's impossible to be kind of sort of committed. You're either all in. Or you're all out. Uh, back in 1982, when I joined the army, I went there in February and I, and I, and I, I signed an agreement 
And the agreement was into the delayed entry program. They call it DEPS, DEPR, Delayed Entry Program. So technically, I was not officially in the Army. I could change my mind. I was not committed because I could either show up on the day I opposed to ship out the basic or I can like tell the recruiter, I don't want to go. Wasn't nothing he can do about it. Wasn't no pressure he could put on me. But on March 18th, that morning when I went in, I signed a contract. It wasn't just no agreement. I'm signing a contract saying I'm fully committed to what's about to take place. I was no longer a depper. I believe that there are some in the body of Christ today who are just deppers. Not yet fully committed. To commit ourselves to God, we must yield to him. Mark 12, 30 says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. We should surrender to him, die to him, entrust ourselves to him, and serve him. True commitment is not something you can take back. Ah, I hope I help about 50 of y'all this morning, and 50 of y'all help another 50, and then we can... Don't, don't judge me right here. I'm going to Matthew, the sixth chapter. I, I pray and hope. Don't judge me. I pray and hope that the church does not return to normal. Amen. The church is in need of revival and reformation. I pray and hope you got people around here waiting for church to get back to normal. Normal has been a problem. I pray and hope that the church does not return to normal. We found out during the pandemic, and I shared last, last week, we found out there were some things we just been doing. Y'all all right? Matthew 6, chapter, I don't think I'm going to finish today, but we're going to, since it's a series, I ain't got to. Y'all all right? Matthew 6, chapter, starting at verse 25. This is, Jesus Christ is so awesome, not was so awesome, is so awesome. And this Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5 through 7, one of the most powerful teachings in the body of Christ. I know we got our favorite preachers, we got our favorite teachers, but if you want to really get in on, listen to Jesus teach the word. In Matthew, he, see the Sermon on the Mount is so famous and this is where D Jesus uh, uh, consolidates uh, one sermon. Those, those five, five to seven, that's just like one sermon. And it's by far Jesus' longest explanation of what it looks like to live as his follower and to serve God as a member of the body of Christ. He, Jesus taught all kinds of subjects. He talked about prayer. He talked about justice. And I think that's just something that needs to be taught across the body of Christ today like never before. I don't care what color your, your, your congregation is, what ethnicity you are, because I'm telling you, when you start teaching about justice, we might stop getting some black boys. Black boys might stop getting killed. I didn't want to go into that today, but, but, but it, 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 because justice ain't being taught. Righteousness is not being taught. People still think they are better than. There's still an inferiority complex. Let me move. Let me move. I feel I'm, I'm still saying don't judge me. I felt the project trying to rise up. Let me let me let me quench that thing right now in the name of Jesus. You get angry. I say angry in the pulpit, so I say I used to would have said something else. It just makes no sense. It makes no sense. But Jesus taught about justice. He talked about caring for the needy, handling the religious law. He talked about that. He talked about divorce, fast and judging other people's salvation. He talked about a lot. Read chapter five through seven in Matthew. The Beatitudes and the Lord. That's what the Lord's Prayer is. The model. Amen. Verse 25. Let's start there. Matthew 6, chapter verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you wear. 
it is not it is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Who are you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spend. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I got a church in here today. For a title today, let's just go with nothing deep. Choosing to make a kingdom commitment. Choosing to make a kingdom commitment. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus made another kingdom commitment. Commitment, one that led to his persecution and death. See, when Jesus was teaching on the mount, he wasn't just looking for people to follow rules. He was shooting for their hearts. And something that's getting old, we should not be talking one way and still living another. A lot of people put on a good front as Christians but live a life that's contrary to spiritual commitments and got the nerve to get offended when truth is spoken. Yes, as, as the sister said, when, when you call them out, folk get mad. Pastor Angie and our prayer is that none of us allow ourselves, um, and if you have been, to be, in, to be inconsistent with God and consistent with your commitment to God. Let the day, if you have been, let the day be a turnaround. Let the day be that change where we start living a life of consistency. Uh, this, is, this is what people, this is what God called people to do. Hear me right here. Real commitment is one of the things I believe that is missing in the world today. It's missing in a lot of organizations. It's missing in politics and missing in families. And sad to say, there are many people of God that lack commitment. Uh, I'm going somewhere. Y'all be all right with all the churches in America. And let's bring a little bit closer with all the churches in, in New Bern, North Carolina. Why isn't there a greater spiritual and moral impact being made? There is a kingdom. There's a lack of kingdom commitment. Now, there are several types of commitment. All of us enter in different types of commitment. There's the casual commitment you got with your friend. There's a coerced commitment when the people force you into a thing. There's a contractual commitment. There's the, the camaraderie where you're just getting along, there's friendship. But then there's our kingdom commitment, the Christian commitment, a commitment based on kingdom cause. If my commitment is based on kingdom cause, I might not like some other things. But my commitment is based on kingdom cause. Kingdom commitment. Kingdom commitment is a resolve to hold a course of action based on the conviction established by the word of God. I don't let my feelings get in the way. I, I don't let politics get in the way. I don't let my ideologies get in the way. I don't even let my distorted core beliefs get in the way. This commitment is where I go above and beyond with the sole desire to please God. It's all right if pastors are pleased. 
It's all right if the bishops are pleased. It's all right if my auxiliary leader is pleased. But they're not the reason I put the work in. The work is put in because I want to please God. A conviction where I talk about commitment is a resolve that I'm going to do something. And I, when you make up your mind you're going to do something, it's going to take effort. Real commitment is never conditional. I hope I'm helping somebody today. Real commitment is not a Sunday thing. It's an every day. It's an all year long. No days off. No breaks. Other folk will see our commitment to God if it's real. And they'll see it on days other than what we call Sunday. They'll see it. <clears throat> they'll see it and hear it in the hair and nail salon, in the barbershop, and on our jobs. They will even see our commitment to God in our relationships. It really doesn't cost anything to get saved. Fallen Christ is a little different. But committing to him can cost you everything. Committing to God can cost you everything. Jesus states God's number one priority in, 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 in this text I read. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given unto you as well. This is one of the most important statements made by Jesus and has established what should be the first priority in our own lives. It's more important than what we consume every day. I know you can't wait to get breakfast. Or lunch or whatever. We can't wait. Spend all night trying to decide what you're going to wear the next morning. I know. But how about putting God's kingdom first? And he'll take care of that for you. You ain't got to worry about it. And, 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 and all my, all, and you real fashion folk, y'all know fashion gonna change anyway. Yeah, yeah, y'all all right? This should be the rule for all of us when we're setting our priorities, putting God first. Over the last 25 years, uh, serving in the kingdom and, 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 and almost 16, next month will be, we're coming up on 16 years, I've seen God move mightily in people's lives. Blessing after blessing. Get them through embarrassing and heartbreaking situations. Kept their children from harm. Some that they know, some they don't even know about. And they still refuse to place God as a top priority. After all of that. God is not to be placed in a list of priorities. Instead, everything we do, should, we should seek first the kingdom of God. I don't choose between honoring God, loving Pastor Angie, or being a good pastor or a good teacher at the college. I honor God and seek first the kingdom of God by being a good spouse, by being a good worker, by being a good pastor. That's how I honor God. God is not in the priority. Uh, I have to put him in a list. I can be all of that because I put him first. He's not in the list. He is the list. Yeah. Jesus reminds us that caring about our health, you got folk that can, they got the membership and the fitness clubs and all that. That's good. But it shouldn't be first. You got some people, don't y'all judge me, don't send me no, I gave him an email address for one reason, don't be sending me there for the other mess. You got folk to go in the grocery store, spend more time reading labels than they do spending reading the word. I know I'm going to get, I should not gave my email address out. Somebody going to write me right now. Spend more time going down them aisles reading. How much you done read at home? I hope y'all all right. Amen. On the mount, Jesus didn't tell, Jesus just didn't tell the people to stop worrying. He told them to replace worry with a concern for the kingdom of God. With this verse, what this verse demands is a commitment to find out and do the will of God, 
to fuse ourselves, to align ourselves totally with his purpose. And this commitment must come first. <sighs> Jesus told us God going to add all them other things. Why do people believe the death, burial, and resurrection, but won't believe about seeking him first, putting him first? People will pick and choose what they believe in scripture. Y'all all right? As we all know, seeking the kingdom of God is a choice. It's a choice. It's a fundamental choice that every, everyone makes when we first repent and get converted. Yet after that day, our Christian life will either reinforce that decision or deny it. I'm trying to give us something to think about here. We're a mature church. Jesus in all of this. Jesus is so cool. He, he in all of this <clears throat> like only he can. He in that, that, that discourse by saying, do not worry about tomorrow. This is, this is the open invitation for us to experience a freedom from anxiety and worry that many of us know too well as it relates to life and physical things. Jesus contrasted the life of those who do not know God and are separated from him with those who know God and receive his loving care. People who know God should not be seeking things first. And, and, and just for a little, you know, if you feel like you got to worry, worry about what's happening today. If you got to worry about something, let's worry about what's happening today. Because the truth of the matter is most of the stuff we worry about is foolish. Either we can't control most of it because if we do, we would do something about it. <laughs> Y'all all right? Anything, when you worry, that's a bad recipe for mental health. That's a bad recipe for mental health. Jesus is reminding us the importance of living in the present. That's it. He said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about tomorrow. Hey, Jesus even went on to say, ain't nothing, now hear me, ain't nothing wrong think, thinking about the past. It's definitely ain't nothing wrong think, thinking about the future. We need all of that. But I got to think about the day. If I don't handle the day right, I may not make it to or I may make some decision in the day that's going to negatively impact my future. Don't get so focused on what you miss, what's happening right now. Don't get so focused on the past that you miss what's happening right now. God wants us to live in the present. We can best believe that since seeking first this kingdom and righteousness is important to God, best and believe, believe this, Satan will do everything he can to make sure you don't seek God first. <clears throat> he will influence us or try to push us to give into our flesh instead. And we all know no good thing dwelleth in the flesh. We all know that the flesh profits us nothing. We know the flesh does not grasp spiritual teachings. Somebody that say they love God can sit right in service and not grasp spiritual teachings. Because they get influenced. Let me keep going. The flesh is not willing to depend on anyone or anything outside of its own power and control. You can't tell me what to do. Years ago, years ago, many, many years ago. Pastor don't run our house. I wasn't trying. <laughs> but the spouse was trying to tell the other spouse a particular word that was ministered. But the other one didn't want to hear it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. The flesh hates to be told what to do. The flesh is basically hostile to God. The flesh abuses freedom and it demands to be fed. Sin fuels the flesh. And one of the main, main reasons, that's one of the main reasons we must dethrone the flesh. Matthew 11 and 12. I didn't get this to the son, but Matthew 11 and 12. Oh man, I got to push him. Matthew 11 and 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence taken by force. Now we love this. Jesus' reverence of violence here refers to both the intensity of spiritual warfare, 
surrounding the ministry, uh, surrounding, surrounding his ministry and his kingdom. Now, just like during this time, right now, Satan uses people and systems to come against Jesus and his followers. The kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of heaven didn't just show up. It showed up with holy power, with strength and energy, and it had been pushing back the borders of the kingdom of darkness. It was plain to see that it has shown up when you look at the work that Jesus was doing. All the miracles he was he was he was performing and, 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 and all this tie in uh, uh, regardless of what it might look like. The kingdom is on the move and making great strides. But now it's the time for folk with backbones. Folk that ain't scared. Folk with some fortitude. Folk who are fearless to take hold of it. The kingdom would never be received without putting up a fight. We cannot be passive in this thing. Too many, too many people dying and going to hell because the church being passive. And I ain't just talking about the church. I'm talking about you, the church. I'm the church. Individual. We the church. We're being passive. Hallelujah. Y'all all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are about to be on the other side of this pandemic. That means there's still a pandemic. And we are really gaining some track. We, we, we really gained some traction during the pandemic. The cyber church took off. People have connected and, 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 and we can't miss this moment. Now, the church has got to get on the offensive and we got to start marching in like the military into all the hells in this world, ready to reclaim every square inch for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and when the storm, when the, and when we storm the gates of hell, Christ promises we can't fail. So why are you scared? We will prevail. We will prevail. We've dealt with Hurricane Florence. We've dealt with COVID-19. We done dealt with a whole lot of different personal issues in our life over the years. We done dealt with a whole lot of bunch of nasty attitudes, but it is time to put the devil on the run. It's time to save souls and destroy strongholds. It's time to reclaim this world for our God. It's time to advance the kingdom of God. Listen up, church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. As far back as Genesis, we see Genesis 2 through 4, Adam, Eve, Abel, Cain. We see the devil has been attacking families from the get-go, weakening, working at weakening and destroying family, church family, blood families. <laughs> Satan understands God's intent to establish his kingdom <laughs> using covenant families. And this is one of the reasons Satan always comes against the family, trying to influence them to break covenant. Because he understands the power of covenant. The difference between the people of God, the people that God uses, and those he doesn't, is covenant. God's not going to use people that won't be in covenant. God intends to redeem the world through his covenant with people through the family, the family, the family. The Bible tells us that we become sons and daughters of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. God's plans for the family includes your family right now. And, and you, 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 your blood family, your church family, what he has adopted us into his family. Who adopts a child just to leave them to fend for themselves? Our God has given us everything we need. We just have to operate in it. Always keeping the love of Christ at the center. Uh, this is going to be hard for somebody. I talked to a homeboy, a classmate, the other day. And he, we were talking and he got this name. He called me from high school, you know. He, he said, Bishop, I know you got my name in the hat. In the hat. You know, old school, the prayer hat, you know. He said, I know you got my name in the hat. And then he said... Man, I was thinking about you the other day. And you told me, I forgot I told him. He said, you told me you got to love him anyhow. We're talking about a family member. Dude done, done me dirty, talked about me, put me out there, this, that, and the other. And I came to you, just figured you can be like, yeah, man. And you tell me, well, you got to love him. 
We got to love people even when they do us wrong. If we say that we love Jesus, we're adopted into the family. Now, now, oh, help me. I, I know about 15 of y'all going to get this. Loving, he never said loving was going to be easy. He never said loving wasn't going to be painful. Loving folk can hurt. But it's also heals. First of all, it starts healing you. The one that's been offended, the one that's been hurt. I got to get on, amen. Okay, I think we may get farther along today. Acts 3.25 tells us that we are, you know, uh, the sons of the prophets and, the, and of the covenant which God made with, his, with our father, saying to Abraham, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And in your seed, your seed of Abraham. All the families. You got families waiting on you to walk in what God has ordained for you to walk in. Because, because this, this, is, this is off a little bit here, but, but, but God is ready to bless you in such a way. There's a script that talks about um, the fat, the fat, the fat was dripping. And when it's talking about the fat was dripping, that the overflow is dripping. All fat ain't bad. No, no, the doctors will tell you there's some good fat you need to eat. And God is ready to bless you to a place that your, your, your pathway is dripping with, with fat. Anytime something drips and overflow, it ain't for you. It's for those around you. That's why it's overflowing out of you. You fool. Now he's ready to overflow you. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The only thing God has asked us to do is stay true to covenant. Say stay true to covenant. We are to stay true to covenant. Amen. Uh, um, we got to advance his kingdom. Um, uh, we, 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 I believe that many of us are now people that are ready to be used by God with a deeper level of commitment to advance his kingdom and strengthen our families. Our family need us. Our family need us to strengthen them, not weaken them. Strengthening them don't mean I always say yes to everything that's going on. Iron sharp and iron. Sometimes you can tell your loved one stuff they don't want to hear. You just want to make sure it's seasoned in love with the right motivation. I know, I know, I know, I know. Bitch, if you don't understand, I might not. You know, I, I, I know, I know. I, I, see, I say many of us are still... <laughs> Uh, there, there's still many Christians who are wandering around unsettled, who mouths still need coals heaped on them and flesh dethroned. Uh, real talk, y'all. We all must understand kingdom concept and understand kingdom philosophy. And we're going to be teaching that and processing that. Uh, each year pastors, pastors so awesome, pastors, each year pastors go before the Lord praying and, and seeking God and, uh, God, you know, I need a theme for this year and this, that and the other. And some get really deep and some just think, keep it simple where, you know, uh, the, the things should line up with the overall vision and, you know, uh, but, but see, that, the military does that too. Each branch, branch of the military got its own slogan. Some of the slogans were chosen knowing that it would catch people's attention. People who are wanting to become part of something great and also help them and their families to have a better quality of life. And I was looking at the military, the Navy. It used to be it's not just a job. It's an adventure. But now the Navy has a slogan forged by sea. The Air Force has aim high. But now it's like fly, fight, win. The Marines, they stay steadfast. The few, the proud. The Marine. Simplify. Simplify Dalas. Always faithful. That's the Marine Corps. The Army had one. They done been through a few, but right now it's called Army Strong. Well, ours is everybody deserves to live a refreshing life. And, and we adopt the one unofficially. Together, we can, we can do this. Now, 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 in the military, just like in the body of Christ, everybody got a role to play. And everybody's role is important. 
The same is true for our family, blood and church. That is one of the things that I'm going to, as Holy Spirit lead, going to do another series on the family because I think that's one of the challenges in the family. People are not fulfilling their roles because they don't know their roles. You got children sometimes being the adult. Getting adult responsibility pushed on them and their children. So they're not able to even process properly as a child and develop because we done threw something extra on top of them that they weren't ready for. Let me leave it alone. That's for another day. Uh, but, but, but understanding that we're in a spiritual war, many of us have families and friends who are casualties of this war. One of the first things they teach us in basic training is first aid, but the first aid is always self-aid first. Take care of your own injury before you can help somebody else. And there's a lot of people in the body of Christ that are casualties that we got to help, y'all. But we got to help sales first. I'll listen to the sports shows. I listen to a lot of sports shows. I don't, don't judge. I don't have time to watch a lot of games, so I do to catch up and catch the sports shows. And I listen to some debates. And one of the debates the other day, it wasn't about, you know, the best score, who had the best jump shot, who had the best handles. I would put Kyrie anyway or uh, 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 Steph with that. But, you know, I mean, because they got them handles, you know, K- K- KD, he got that nasty, nasty, funky jump shot. Right. LeBron brings some of everything to the table. Jay Harden just do what he do. You know, you got these folk hitting these rebounds. All of that is great. All those skills are great. But the debate came down. All those abilities are great, but the best ability is availability. Are you available to be used by God? Are you available to use by God? Say, I am available to be used by God. Say, I am available to be used by God. See, we got to be available to be used by God. Amen. Amen. And, 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 some of you have been set up for promotion. You didn't see this promotion when you were fighting. You've been fighting tooth and nail situations after situation after situation, circumstances. You didn't know it was preparation for your promotion. And all because you didn't quit, God is ready to promote you. God is ready to promote you. Huh. But nothing in life worth having comes easy. Nothing in life worth having comes easy. Tell your neighbor, your family is worth the fight. My relationship with God is worth the fight. Yeah, 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 it is worth the fight. Because the truth be told, we done fought over some stuff, some mess that ain't make no sense. And we look back like, why in the world did I even get caught up in that? It wasn't even worth the time. You around here tired now, reputation tarnished, because you fighting something that was not even worth it. Isn't it just like God to use somebody like us? Folk that done gone through, you know what I'm talking about. Because see, the enemy want to think, make you think you can't be used. He need to go back and read the Bible. Because a whole lot of folk up in the Bible, in Scripture, that God used. Um, don't get me started. I can go through Jesus' bloodline. He has some folk up in his family that you wouldn't let in your house. And then we want to judge how God using somebody we know. Like we ain't got no stuff. Yeah, you know you got some stuff. Just because it happened you were living somewhere else don't mean you ain't still got that stuff. Your stuff stink too. Mine do, mine do, too, mine do, too. I try to share a lot of it with y'all, and, and, but I got some more that, you, that I'm going to tell you. Yeah, because folk like, folk like to get up in the pulpit acting like they all that. Your stuff stink too. I don't, care, I don't care what kind of suit you got on. I don't care what kind of shoes you wear or what kind of cologne or perfume you wear. You still smell. You still smell. Matter of fact, we might want to let the word wash us first 
before we put anything on. I'm going to I'm going I'm going to address the church in a few weeks because that, that, that's some stuff in the church has got to change. That's some stuff in the church got to change. That's why I hope the church don't return to normal. I know this one ain't. But I got a word for some of you all. Quitting ain't no option. Quitting is not an option. God has called you and he's chosen you. I ain't going to get where I need to go, but I'm going to. This is a good place to rest today. God has chosen you. There is some stuff you have shared and some stuff you haven't. God is perfecting you. When other folk left you, he never did. Oh, oh, oh. Some folk left that needed to leave. Their season in your life was up. Don't mean you got to cut folk off and kick them to the curb, but they can no longer have that influence in your life that they've been having. Because truth be told, a lot of decisions, a lot of decisions, a whole lot of folk made me behind somebody else's input. Didn't go to Holy Spirit, didn't take it to God, didn't go to the word to see. Got on the phone calling, hey girl, what you think? Hey bro, what you think? Truth of the matter, you should have looked at their life first before you called them. I know all of us know how to get dressed up and put on a facade and put a nice mask on. We got to be committed to the word. We got to do what God has called us to do. We got to be trailblazers. We've got to live and be the adopted sons and daughters that he's ordained for us to be. It is time for the church to stand up and take account for who it is. It is time out for manipulation. It is time out for getting over. It is time out for strategizing, trying to make people do certain things because you want them to do it. If it ain't in here, leave it alone. If it's not in the word of God, leaders, 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 leaders across it. those that, you know, I know I'm gonna get some nasty grants because I done put my email out there. I shouldn't have put it out there. But it's out there. We're going to have to give account to God about how we've led his people, how we've spoken unto his people. It is time out. Oh, help me. I'm going to go sit down. It is, it is time out for recycling Christians. All these lost souls out here and folk busy recruiting out of other people's ministries. I know y'all don't want to hear this. Wait, where you go to church at? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you just come over and see me sometime? You might not look at that as recruitment, but that's exactly what that is. Well, they all God's people. Yeah, but he set them in a particular place. The church has erred for so long. The church... Corporate church has been out of order. Jesus stopped being the focus. God stopped being the focus. We have got to return to the very reason and do what we've been called to do. I hope you got something out of this today. I'll pick back up next week. I thought I would get farther along, but God gave, God released what he wanted to release in the atmosphere. Another level of commitment. We have got to be keen and commit, committed. I want to encourage each and every one of you to be committed. Commitment is a fight. Commitment is not going to come easy. Commitment comes with repetition, uh, uh, re 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 repeating things, repetition. It comes with repeating, repeating. And, 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 and hear me, take small steps. Take small steps. Take small steps, just like a baby. And we celebrate. A baby take one or two steps and we celebrate. Yeah. Celebrate your brothers and sisters. Yeah. I'm out of time. How about this here? Celebrate yourself when you know you have taken a step in the right direction. I'm out of time. 
Love you with the love of the Lord. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, if you're going to praise him, you might as well praise him. Praise him for hearing the word today. Praise him for resonating in your heart. Praise him for sitting you in a position where you can go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. I'm going to tell you, that's a word we all needed to hear. We all needed to hear. Why? Because we are all, especially those of us who confess that Jesus is Lord of our lives. We need that word. And I want you to know something. That's the love of God. That he would bring us a word that would change us, that would challenge us, and would cause us to shift. And this is an opportunity for each one of us, not some of us, but for each one of us to examine our heart and ask the question ourselves, how committed Am I to God? Do I do things for him based on conditions, based on convenience, based on uh, what others think and others say? Or do I do things for him because I know who he is in my life and all he's done for me and knowing that he's not through with me yet? Am I strong enough in the Lord and of good courage, as God said to Joshua, that no one can talk me out of what God has called me to? Or do I have a tickled ear that I need to hear what they have to say because it, it says more to my flesh than to my spirit? Am I strong enough in the Lord that even if I don't like what I see because it's no, I know it's where God has me, I'm able to stay there? Because many times we go as a result of wanting change and we are the conduit for change, but we leave our ability and availability to change. Oh, we can examine ourselves. And we all can say, God is good to me. We all can say, I'm where I am because of the grace of God. We all can say that God's committed to me. God's faithful to me. How can I leave him knowing that he will never leave me nor forsake me? Father, we thank you for the word today. A word that was not sugar-coated a word that wasn't taught to bring us to a place of, of, of jumping and shouting, but yet we can jump and shout when we know that we got a word that can change our lives. And we're not just hearers of the word, but we're doers as well. May we examine ourselves to make sure that not only are we doing what we're supposed to be doing, but we're encouraging other people because of God do it. Don't do it because of the pastor. Don't do it because of your friends. Don't do it. Do it because it's what God wants you to do. And then remove the scales from our eyes so that we don't use excuses to disobey you to say because of what we've seen, we're not going to. Let us remember that we were once a part of the what others have saw. Let us remember that somebody covered us when we was really stinking. Let us remember that someone hid from everybody else our wrongdoing because they were praying in a vessel of yours to help us get to where we are. And when we get there, let us not turn our nose on a soul. Let us remember that because change has come to us as individuals who are the temple of Christ, we cannot expect the church to remain the same. If each one of us come in the difference in who Christ has made us to be, we can't look for everything to be the same. Let us not criticize what you're doing because we don't understand it, but get closer to you so that you will reveal to us what we need to know. And that that you don't want us to know, let us be okay with it. For we're not God, we're to be like God. We are not Christ, we're to be joint heirs with Christ, in Christ. So we thank you for the word today. In our own individual way, we say thank you. In our own way, in our own voice, in our own heart, we say we ask for forgiveness. In our own way, our own heart, in our own voice, we say, God, thank you for showing me what I need to do and the change I need to make. Thank you, God. In our own way, in our own heart, in our own mind, let us, in our own voice, let us not be ridiculed of anyone, not pass judgment on anyone, and not pass judgment on any family. 
We don't know what that family's going through. We can barely deal with the things that are going on in our own family. Let us take our eyes off of somebody else's family for the purpose of ridiculing. And if you show them to us, it's because you want us to be a part of the solution and not the problem. And the way we can bring solution to some areas is through prayer. Thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I thank you for the challenge to raise my level of commitment. I thank you for showing me how great you are in my life. And God, I say, if I had 10,000 tongues, I personally could not thank you enough. We honor you and we bless you like never before. In Jesus' name. I don't want to assume that everyone under the sound of my voice is in right fellowship with the Lord. So I do want to offer you and make an invitation for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you were connected to the Lord and life's ebbs and flows have come in and you broke away from him. I want you to know something. He still loves you. He still wants to be with you. He wants you to know that you are the apple of his eye. And yes, he may have seen, no, not may have, he's seen all that we've all had to do. But I can personally tell you that he's a forgiving God. And so just pray this prayer, mean it in your heart, and just say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I do believe Jesus Christ was dead, buried, and resurrected for me. Oh, Lord Jesus, live within me by way of Holy Spirit that I may live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or you rededicated your life back to the Lord, let it be known. If you're in the sanctuary, tell somebody, I got saved again. I rededicated my life back to the Lord. If you're streaming, put it out there. Yes, because one thing I love is that scripture says, if you cannot confess me before men, neither will I confess you before my Father which is in heaven, who is in heaven. I'm not afraid to confess that Jesus is Lord of my life. Amen. Let somebody know. And I tell you, wherever you do it, they're going to celebrate you. Why? Because they understand the importance of being dedicated to the Lord. Amen. And we celebrate you in here as well. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I must say, Father, thank you for the word today. Oh, and I say to Bishop, thank you for your obedience. Ah, truly we can serve the Lord with no regrets. Amen. Well, we have an opportunity to continue to sow, uh, to serve God in our sowing. Amen. And one thing I love about sowing is based on our relationship with the Lord, how we have grown in his word, where we are in his word. So you have some options, and um, it may be up there already. You can use Givelify, look for Refreshing Lives in New Bern. You can also use Cash App, dollar sign Refreshing Lives, or you can mail a check payable to RLC or Refreshing Lives Church and mail it to P.O. Box 3005, New Bern, North Carolina, 28564. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, what we do in here is word-based. And so when we sow, it's based on the word of God. Malachi 3, 9 and 10 tells us to bring all our tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in his house for his people. And that he, a promise from God, will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. And he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Thank you, Father. 
Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, it's coming right back at you. <laughs> Praise God for those who are sowing first fruit and you're doing it online. Uh, then just let us know. Send a text to send a text to 94090 that simply says first fruit. And you'll receive a call that Bishop may pray the first fruit blessing upon you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, for our announcements, uh, yes, we have a continuation of the master class this Thursday, and uh, it, we are continuing uh, in the section on being good health, focusing in on mental health. And boy, was it good this past Thursday. Oh, my God. And so one thing about it, all of us uh, are, have a, a, a mental function, all of us. All of us, all of us, whether we are functioning in wholeness, whether we are in need of help, uh, we need to keep that part of our life well. And uh, we need to know how to fight some things off as well. So you can sign up for that. Um, if you receive the link for the master class, it's the same link that you received. Or you can text RLCMC to 94090 and get that information. This coming Saturday, we are actually doing something that we do periodically, and that is we're sowing and giving back into the lives of others. And so this Saturday from 10 to 12, we are opening up our storage unit. And uh, there are items in there that we are just donating, giving away. And so if you are in need of the items, if you would like some of these items, they're yours for the hauling off. <laughs> That's all you have to do. Amen. Uh, we believe in being good stewards over everything the Lord has given us. And since it's been in storage, and we heard Bishop say in the word that some things we're not returning to. Uh, we're going to sow them into somebody else's life who can use them, whether it be you or another ministry. Uh, certainly, you can come out during those times, and those items that are marked, uh, that are not marked to remain, you are welcome to have. Amen. And then for those of you who have not signed up for Better Me Empowerment, what are you waiting for? When I tell you, oh my God, that I've heard some of the s empowerment sessions, these women have laid it out. Okay, I'm going to confess. I've done repeat, and I've listened to it more than once. That's how good it is, right? Go to abettermeempowerment.com to register. It's free to register. If you'd like to do the add-on of Zumba, yes, we are going to be doing Zumba virtually. It's just $5. And the store for Better Me Empowerment will open this week. So you must visit the website often, all right? Well, it's been a great word to go with a great day. So we just give God some praise. Oh, we have food. Yes, thank you. Uh, the the uh, refreshing food pantry is open today. Um, so you can come and pick up some food because we want to do our part to wipe out food hunger. Thank you. <laughs> I was stuck there. Thank you, Michelle. All right. So let's just go out on our refreshing song because I have truly been refreshed. Truly. We believe everyone deserves to live a refreshing life. Amen.
someone come on Your joy is here You're in the right place Lend me your ear No matter the problem Father, we leave refreshed in the Lord. Woo! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And we give you the highest praise. And I declare and decree that all week long, this word will resonate in our hearts. And we will be doers of it and not just hearers. And we will think about our family and seek you about how to minister to our loved ones both those who are in our bloodline and those who are part of the church. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs>